Good, good, good Thursday to my darlings. Yay, snow day. It is a snow day. It is Thursday and it's Miss Bland. And I'm going to jump on real, real fast and go over today's packet items and reminders. I hope you have enjoyed your snow. If you're choosing to watch this video, that means you chose to have a snow morning. And I think that is an awesome, awesome thing for you and your family to do. So I'm gonna be as fast as I possibly can so that you can get back to your snow or maybe you need to have a snow recovery, take a nap. <clears throat> so let's get started. Find your packet, make sure you have it. And let's go over some things. Now, some things, Miss Bland, this morning I had 10 kiddos of your classmates. So that's about half the class that joined me at 830. So we decided it was a snow day. So there were some things we were going to do, some things we weren't going to do. So keep up with me best you can. Remember, the benefit of video is you can pause me and you can rewind if you miss something. So let's get going. On the first page of your packet, we decided snow day meant no spiral review. So on top of Thursday's box, I want you to write the word snow, S-N-O-W, in big letters. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. Now. Let's look, let's talk about spelling words. You have 12 spelling words that you are gonna be responsible for spelling for Ms. Bland tomorrow for your spelling test. Make sure that you've remembered your Y turns into an I and we add ES to some of our words. And some of our words because of the S, the ES or the SH that's on the end of that word, there's a little difference in the ending. And we talked about that this week too. But those 12 words will be in Seesaw tomorrow for you to spell. Miss Bland thinks it would be an awesome idea to practice spelling them today with someone bigger than you. Maybe there's a brother or a sister or a cousin or grandma or dad or mom or someone who can read the word to you and have you spell it. You could write it on your dry erase board. You could take a practice spelling test on a piece of paper or in your notebook. But go ahead and see which words you're really, really good at and which words you need to work on. <clears throat> our story for this week, our story for this week has been about these awesome kids at PS22 who do something amazing. They are a part of a chorus. And oh my goodness, they sing their hearts out. And you are going to have the option of rereading. Ooh, look at that prefix, reread to read again. I want you to reread your story. Page 246 in your reading book. If for some reason you're not sure where your reading book is, look for it and find it. But the story is posted here inside of my presentation. So you can listen very carefully to all the times this Bland has read the story this week. And now it's your chance to reread it or to read it again on your own. Here's the first page. Use your book to read it now or pause and read it on the screen. Here's page two. Now, join me inside your packet for Thursday's first page. And it's about, guess what? They've got the beat, our text for this week. And we're gonna write about reading. So what I've done is the boys and girls and I this morning, we went ahead and filled in the stuff that we knew. We knew some things about the story that we could all have together, that we could all write. So it said in They've Got the Beat, that was the title, the author wrote about the PS22 course from New York. That was true for everybody. The two blue dots have this something very important. That is what you're going to do. You're going to tell me two details. What's a detail, Miss Bland? Oh, you know what a detail is. A detail is a fact from our text. You're going to give me two details that were super important about this amazing course 
from PS22. And then we talked about that the main idea, what this whole story was about, was about how hard this choir worked and how awesome they were. So you're going to include all of this on your paper. Pause here to get down everything that's in red that is common for the whole class. And also take the time to include your two blue details as well. Pause here to complete. <clears throat> All right, vocabulary. We have eight words that we're actually focusing on this week. And you will actually see those same eight words again next week as we talk about the big book story for this unit. But today, I'm not going to tell you which two, spell, which two vocabulary words that you should make your sentences from. I want you to choose. And guess what? Best part is you can choose a word that we've done before, but you can't write the same sentence and draw the same picture, but you can use the same word. So pick two words that you like. Write the word on the line where it says vocabulary word. That would be right here. Give me a nice, cute little picture in the middle that goes with this amazing second grade sentence you're going to write on the lines. It's going to start with capital letter. It's going to have punctuation on the end, and the vocabulary word is going to be underlined. Pause here to complete your two vocabulary practice sentences. If you're back, that means vocabulary is done or you plan to finish your vocabulary on the end. This week's skill for ELA has been prefixes and you guys have been rocking prefixes out all week long. We've been talking about three of them, re, un, and dis. We talked about re was to do something again. I'm gonna reread the book, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to redo my homework, I'm going to do it again. If I'm going to rewrite my story, I'm going to write it again. We talked about un. Un means not. So if I unlike, I don't like. I, it's un, I, don't, I don't like it. No, it's not for me. Unhappy, I'm just not happy about that at all. Unkind, I really was not kind to you. And then we talked about this. Dis had kind of two meanings. It could be the opposite of or not. So if I say, I dislike you, that means I do not like you or the opposite of liking you. If I disagree with you, that means I do not agree or the opposite of agree. So that's what we've been talking about and focusing on. It's that word part that we add to the beginning. We don't put the prefix on the end. We put them on the beginning of words. So you've got some prefixes that have been added to the beginning of some root words and made new words. Your assignment is to look at those words and we're going to decompose them. Hey, Ms. Bland, that's our math word for this week. I know, I know, but sometimes words travel to different parts of our lesson. So let's look at a couple that we did together this morning in Zoom. The first one was done for you. The word was rewrap. The prefix would be re, because we're dealing with un, re, and dis. The base word would be wrap. That's what's left after I take off re. Base word, root word, same thing. And then I told the meaning to wrap it again. So then look at unhappy. First part wants to know my prefix. Well, my word was unhappy. I took un off. That was one of my prefixes. So I put un here. That left me with my root word or base word of happy. I put happy here. Now, what does unhappy mean? Well, un means not or the opposite. So if I'm unhappy, I'm not happy. Disappear. This is my prefix here. Up here would go here. So this means not or the opposite of. So disappear is not to appear or the opposite of appear. Ta da da da. Same thing for unkind, un, base word kind. What does it mean? If you're unkind, you're not kind. <clears throat> Refill. My prefix was re, there it is, which made my base word feel, there it is. And when you refill something, it's to fill it again. You are going to complete the rest of this page doing that exact same process that we've done here. 
but make sure you pause here to copy down the four helpful hints from Ms. Bland and your friends. Inside of Seesaw, there are nine pictures. And on these picture cards, well, nine cards are not pictures. On these nine cards, there is a prefix clue. And on that prefix clue, it's gonna walk you through, Ms. Bland even did an example. It's gonna give you a chance to tell Ms. Bland the prefix what the root word is and what new word it creates when you put them together. So be sure you visit Seesaw to get that completed. <clears throat> Math for today. Sometimes it's a good day to just do a review and a snow day is a perfect day for math to just be a review. And that's what it is. Today, we're going to do the exact thing we did yesterday. We're gonna continue talking about turning our problems vertically and showing that tens and ones model so that we may even need to decompose a 10 in order to subtract and find a difference. Good Lord, Miss Bland, that was a lot of math vocabulary. It was, but every bit of it is vocabulary that you already know. So let's look at your math page inside of your packet. Oops, sorry, before that, Two minute timed sprint should be your next page. Your two minute timed sprint needs to be timed for two minutes. Boys and girls, hear me good. These are a little harder. You're almost third graders. So these timed sprints are gonna get harder. Do the best you can. Remember our rule, if you don't know, don't sit and get upset. Skip to another one that you may know the answer to. Don't waste your two minutes and don't let it get the best of you. Now, topic 13. We're going to be using math drawings to represent subtraction with and without decomposition, which means sometimes we're gonna need it and sometimes we'll just be able to subtract. So your page should look like mine. We're gonna do A, B, C, and D together. E and F will be your responsibility. And you can put a big old X through the second side. We decided on snow days, we were gonna take it a little easy. So let's do A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D, just to review and to make sure you're good to go. So let's look at A, 31 minus 19. First thing I must do is write my problem vertically so that I have it. Then I'm going to model 10. Ten, twenty, thirty, one. Okay, Ms. Bland, I got my 31. Now I need to take away nine ones. Uh Ms. Bland, I don't have nine ones. Oh, but we can decompose a 10. Sorry, Mr. 10. I need you to break up two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have 11 ones and I have two tens. Now, can I take nine away now, Ms. Bland? Absolutely. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. That left me with two. Then I must take away a 10, which left me with one. So 31 minus 19 is 12. Do you remember that from yesterday? I sure hope you do. Let's look at letter B. 46 minus 24. First thing I do is vertically write my problem, being sure that I line up my tens and ones. As the weeks go on, we will add hundreds and we will do the same to make sure they are lined up neatly. Now let's model 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's 46. All right, Ms. Blaine, I need to take away four. Oh, hey, Ms. Blaine, I don't have to do anything. I have four. And that's what we talk about without having to decompose. We didn't have to decompose anything. There was enough ones there. It left us with two. And then uh, it says take away two tens. 
And that's what we shall do. And there's two left. So 46 minus 24 is 22. And there was no need to decompose. Let's look at number uh, letter C. I was going to say number C. Oh my goodness. 51 minus 33. Model 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1. All right, I have 51. I'm going to take away three ones. Um, okay, no, I don't have three ones to take away. So, Mr. Tian, I love you, but we must break you apart. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I have 11 ones because I broke apart that 10 and four tens. So now I can take away three. One, two, three. That left me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. And then I must take away three tens. One, two, three. That left me with one. So 18. is my answer. It's the difference of 51 minus 33. <clears throat> Let's try one more to make sure you're ready to go. 67 minus 49. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, Miss Blaine, I got seven ones, six tens. I'm good to go. Now it's time for me to subtract. So I'm gonna take away nine ones. Oh, I only have seven. So I'm going to have to decompose. We'll break apart a 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now I have 10. I have 17 ones. I think now I can take away 9. And then I only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 tens left. So 17 ones. Uh-oh. Sorry about that. 17 ones, and I'm going to take nine of them away. Well, I know that's 10, so I'm going to take away nine of them. And that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I need to take away four tens. One ten, two tens, three tens, four tens. That left me with one. There's 18. All right, so guys, I have given you a great review and I'm sure you're like, Ms. Blaine, we did this yesterday. I know. So today's your chance just to sharpen your skill with it. Make sure you have A, B, and C, and D, almost forgot D, on your paper. Your assignment is to then do E and F on this page. E and F are the only two other problems required on this page. Now, if you want to be a fancy, fancy math student, you want to be sharp and keep reviewing, you are welcome to do the second side. <clears throat> I will give extra credit to anyone who wants to complete it, but it will not be required. And there will be no points taken if you don't do it. Now, on the next page, you are to complete A, B, and C any way that you choose. Um, you can use the hundreds chart that they have given, or you may draw your own if you like using your six and ones. You're welcome to do whatever works for you. Um, but I do need to see your models. You cannot just put an answer in the box. Also, A, B, C, D, E, and F are there waiting for you as well. You will complete 
those six problems. So all together, you have six problems here, three problems here, and two problems on the other page. That's 11 math problems for you to complete. Questions, any questions you have, please send them to Ms. Plan. I will go live at two to make sure no one needs any help with anything. So jump on it too. If there's a question you have or something you want me to go over again, if you're watching this video later tonight and you've had an amazing snow day, then you are welcome to send me a dojo and we will work out a way whether we need to Zoom one-on-one -on -one or if I can send you a little video clip to the phone or whatever it is you may need, I'll be more than happy to help in any way I can. Remember that you need to finish your packet work for Thursday. Check on Seesaw for today. It has been assigned. I'm super sorry about yesterday. And to make sure you check the Bailey specials for whatever Mr. D, Ms. T, Ms. Ellington, and Ms. Reason have planned for you for today. So be sure to check that out too. All right, guys, it's been an awesome day. It's a snow day. We got to see some really beautiful snow. I hope you have had a great day. And I hope that if there's something you need, you will let Ms. Bland know because I am here to help you. Tomorrow's Friday, which means it's our asynchronous day. So your assignments will be loaded and the video will be up. Make sure you complete all the things you need to do. And I might even offer a face-to-face -face Zoom just to make sure since today has been a little different. But mom and dad, I'll send Dojo messages to let you know. I hope you guys have a fabulous afternoon, a fabulous night. Stay safe, stay warm, stay snowy. <laughs>